everyone, it's Rose and I am going to show you what I got in London and Paris. So the first day we went to St. Paul's Cathedral and then we took one of those buses to go to Piccadilly Square and we just walked down the street and went to Fortnum & Mason which is one of the big chain stores and places that you can have high tea or afternoon tea. We had afternoon tea and then we did some shopping and I just bought a whole bunch of tea because I love tea and I don't drink a lot of coffee. So, you know, and they're really lightweight. So I was like, okay, I can just pack these into my suitcase and then give them away as gifts. And so I bought a whole bunch. So during afternoon tea, we all got to try a different one. There were four of us and we each wanted to try a different one so that we can pick out the ones that we wanted to buy. I think I tried the Royal Blend and I really liked it. In the summer of 1902, Royal Blend has been popular ever since for its smooth honey-like flavor. And yeah, so I got a couple of these. I got this one that I haven't tried yet. It's the black tea with peach. I got the wedding breakfast tea. I got a couple of these for my friends that were newly engaged and I got one big one, the loose leaf one for myself. It says on the side here, a special blend created especially to celebrate the wedding of Prince William and Miss Catherine Middleton. I've been having this almost every day. This thing is huge. It's 8.8 ounces, 250 grams. These ones right here, they're about three or four pounds. This one's highly recommended, the wedding breakfast one. And then I got some at Harrods. I gave some away. So this one is the Earl Grey one. And oh, I have another one right here um, from Fortnum & Mason. This is the flavored green tea, ginger. And obviously I haven't tried it yet because it's not opened. And I got some other ones that I don't remember. I gave them out. Um, I think I got like an apple mint one and then a passion fruit one. So before I went to London, I got these roller balls from Sephora. This is the Chloe EDP and this is the Chloe Love Story EDP. I think I bought these for $42, but they're valued at $56 because they're sold for $28 separately. If you look online, they still have this, but then some of the stores are sold out. Just wanted to try it out. I didn't want to commit to a big bottle because as you can see back there, I have a lot of perfume and I didn't want to just buy another bottle just because. So I got these and I really, really liked both of these. So I decided to get one while I was there at Duty Free. So actually before I took off to London, I saw this one at the Duty Free store. This is a 1.7 ounce and I think I got it for $75. And it turns out that the 1.7 ounce was sold for $105 and of course there's no tax on it so then yeah I got this one and the 1.7 and I've been using it like every day so you can already see kind of put a dent in it already but when I was at the Heathrow airport in London coming back to LAX of course I come across the Chloe Love Store EDP I got the 1.7 and it sold for 105 in the stores here plus tax, but I think this also was 75. So while I was at the duty free, this employee was passing out coupons that were like $10 off a certain amount or $5 off a certain amount. And I think I got a $10 off coupon. So then I got, it was like 75, I think US dollars minus $10. So then I was like, Oh, then it's totally worth it to get it. So I got the 1.7 ounce on the way back. Uh, on my last day, I just went to the Burberry store. I wasn't planning to really shop around. I was just walking around like everywhere. Like at one point my friend and I split up and then I just walked by the British Museum and then I wanted to go down Oxford Street and just to see, you know, what it was like. And then I was looking at the prices and I was like, okay, we get um, the tax free and everything at the airport. So I was still calculating because I'm always like comparing prices, right? So I saw that it was a little cheaper and I was like, okay, then I'll just buy a couple of things that I've been wanting to try. So I picked up number seven light glow natural blush. And I use this in my Burberry tutorial a few weeks ago. This is great for a blush, but it's not dark enough to contour. Although she did say it's the best seller and a lot of people use this for contouring, but um, I think it's for people who have like really fair skin. Obviously it's gonna show up if you have like porcelain skin, right? And I've always wanted to buy this almond uh, number 103 eyeshadow. And so I just picked 
This one up there, it's just a matte brown, matte soft brown. This is just one that I've been wanting to try because you can also use this shade as a contour for your nose. So I showed you guys that I like to use this NARS um, Portobello shadow to contour a lot. This one for my nose area. So it's pretty similar. So blush number 12 eyeshadow palette i just wanted something that was a little springy so i got this concealer in number one porcelain and i got this to highlight this wouldn't work by itself to um conceal my under eye circles you would have to color correct and then go in with this one otherwise your dark circles can appear really gray. I guess it depends on how blue or purple your dark circles are. But this is also great to use as a highlighter down your T-zone and yeah, other places that you want to highlight. And then lastly from Burberry, I got this uh, effortless eyebrow definer and this is in malt brown 04. If you guys have seen my Burberry tutorial, this brown is a little too red for my hair right now because I don't have a lot of red in my hair. It comes with a pointed tip like this. A lot of eyebrow pencils nowadays are coming out with this pointed tip like this where it's sharper on one side and then of course it has the screw brush on the other and yeah so that was it from Burberry so in Paris we went to the Louvre and on our way out we saw this shopping area of course I go to the beauty section and then I started comparing prices because I think I saw some of the lipsticks and things like that for 27 euros or less and then they said that if you buy three items or I think it was like a, if you spend a hundred euros or more you can get 20% off and of course as a tourist in the country you can get the tax free at the airport and stuff and so. I bought just um, um, two lipsticks. I got the Rouge Volupe de Shine from YSL. This is in shade 50 and I've been wearing this a lot in some of my videos and I'll swatch it for you. It's just this bright pink. It's a little sheer, okay? So you can just apply it without really looking in the mirror or anything like that. And yeah, I really like the hot pink. It was really pretty, so I was like, why not? And then I wanted something that had more pigment. So I got the Rouge Per Couture, the mattes in 208. Pretty matte, hot pink shade. And of course, I'll swatch it for you. So you can see it's darker and it's matte. See how that one's shiny and this one's not. Oh, at the airport, I just thought these were cute gifts. Of course, I have yet to give them out, but I got these travel mini mints. And so, yeah, they were only a couple bucks. Um, so I got these as gifts. So on our last day in Paris, my friend and I wanted to split up. She wanted to go to another museum and I wanted to go to the Chanel store, but we both had to go in the same direction. So we walked all along St. Germain. So we started off in St. Michel. And so we walked down this long street. So I learned that a lot of the drugstore brands and um, some other beauty brands were sold at pharmacies there. So I saw this huge one and I was like, oh, let me just, you know, stop by. This brand is sold everywhere in Korea, like in pharmacies, Olive Young, like all those stores. And I was like, I have to get it because it's probably way cheaper here. So I saw this brand and I just picked up the cold cream. It's the hand cream. It doesn't really have fragrance in it, so it doesn't smell all that great, but it's really, really thick. And so this came in like a pack of two. Cold cream lip balm. And I think it was like five euros for two. So while we were at the store, I asked one of the employees what a good French brand of skincare was. And she showed me this brand, Rexaline. And I just got the Hydra Precious or hydrating cleansing foam, and I used the heck out of this. I love this thing. I think it was 20 euros or less, 
and it's just a cleansing foam. It smells really good. It's gentle and it's hydrating. So a lot of cleansing foams or cleansers really strip the skin so they're not pH balanced but I was like give me something that doesn't strip the skin and that's gentle because I like to use these cleansing foams like in the morning. Yeah I've used this every morning since I've been back and I'm already out so yeah and this is a 4.22 fluid ounce so yeah, I highly recommend this brand. So once I came across Declior and Caudalie, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get something from there, right? It was like half the price of what you see here in the stores, in the department stores and Sephora. So the No Rolly Hydrating Night Balm, and I've only used it a couple times. You can mix this in with your night cream if you want extra hydration. Uh, you just have to get past the scent because obviously a lot of these products have a strong like herbal scent to it. I don't know what to get, you know, I don't know if I should get Caudalie or if I should get Darfong or and she was like, you know, try this one. And then she gave me the Skin Code Switzerland Essentials and I was like, yeah, but it's made in Switzerland. I want something that's made in France. But she was like, you know that Switzerland is like number one. So the father of the owner of Skin Code used to be like the president or something at La Prairie. People were asking this guy to come up with something that was affordable. And so he came out with a brand that obviously is affordable, but still has like similar technology and the research and everything. So yeah, that's how Skin Code was born. She gave me this brightening eye contour cream and I've been using it. There's nothing like, I haven't noticed a drastic difference. Obviously it's only been about like two months. Um, but yeah, it's just like an easy, affordable eye cream that you can use. So nothing that I bought from this brand was over 50 euros. I think this cream was like the most expensive and this was I think 45 euros. It's the Regenerating Night, cre night Cream and I just wanted something that would really help regenerate the skin um, because we obviously have slower cell turnover as we age. And yeah, I've used all of it already. And then I have this Skin Code exclusive. It's the Cellular Wrinkle Prohibiting Serum. I just asked the employee for a serum that would focus on preventing wrinkles, so an anti-wrinkle serum. And she gave me this and it had some like shimmer particles to it. And the reason why a lot of companies will put some shimmer particles to it is so that it helps the product to really stick onto your skin and kind of give you that glow as well. And so yeah, I used all of it. Like I was just going through this really, really fast. I was applying it day and night. I didn't notice anything drastic in my skin, but I just thought that, um, you know, it's better than not applying anything. So yeah, I've used all of that. So there's a product that I actually really like from Skin Code. It's the Daily Defense and Recovery Veil with SPF 30. So I haven't used a moisturizer with SPF in it for a really long time. So I always use a moisturizer without SPF and then I use an SPF 50 on top of it separately. Um, she was like, yeah, it's something really, really easy to use. Cause I was actually buying this for my brother. And then, so I bought two um, once I like tested it out on my skin. It's really hydrating. The only downside to this one, I think I got a defective one because the pump has been leaking. So it's been really messy and I've been losing a lot of product. But other than that, it's been really hydrating. It's a 1.7 ounce, so it looks really small, but I still have a good amount left and I've been using it every day. So yeah, this is one that's good to buy. So the last product that I bought from Skin Code was this SPF 50 oil-free lotion that provides broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection, preventing cutaneous damage from UV exposure. So it says to apply 20 minutes prior to sun exposure. Yeah, we all know that. So yeah, it has vitamin E in it. And I was just asking the girl, I was like, I don't care how much it costs, get me one that is not oily, not sticky, and I already have one that I really like from another dermatology brand that I've been using for like five years now. I wanted to just try another brand out because I was like, let's see if another brand can surpass that one, right? So this product is actually a little bit sticky. It's not greasy, but it's a little sticky. So after you apply, if you feel your face like this, you can feel the stickiness. You definitely want to powder your face if this is the only thing you're wearing. Otherwise you will have hair like sticking all over your face. I think it was only 
15 euros, which is really cheap for a sunscreen. But I definitely wouldn't use something like this on my clients when I'm doing makeup because it is a little sticky and I don't want the foundation or anything to clump up. I don't want it to interfere with the different formulations that I'm putting on the face. So yeah, um, if you were to try out this line, I would just kind of recommend the Daily Defense and Recovery Veil. And then this foaming cleanser, if you can get a whole bunch of this, I would. I should have gotten another one. Um, I think that's it for this London and Paris haul. If I can give you any word of advice for those of you guys who are traveling to London or Paris anytime soon, you should definitely get a travel adapter. I got one on Amazon for like six bucks or something and it came in really handy for charging my phone and also for charging this extra battery at night. And this battery really saved my life one time because you know I was using a lot of the Google Maps uh, when I I was just walking around everywhere in London and in Paris and my phone was running really low on battery so then I remembered I had this and um you know you don't have time to like go to a cafe and like charge your phone or anything you're like always on the go I think this extra battery charger was about ten dollars on Amazon it has this USB port so you would just put your iPhone charger or whatever charger you have and then link it up to your iPhone and then press this button right here and it should charge. So this is out of battery right now, so it has that red light. It should be green when you're charging your phone. And then, yeah, it comes with this little pocket. Those are the two things that you really need. And uh, people ask me this all the time. They ask if Paris is really that dangerous, if there really are that many pickpocketers. I didn't really feel threatened by anyone or unsafe at any point even when I was kind of walking around alone but you definitely do want to be careful I had a backpack with me I don't think you should carry the purses that you can just put over your shoulder because if someone were to really try to steal from you they can just grab the bag and run um I did hear that someone stole a phone like they basically came, went up to the person and said hey like do you want me to take a picture for you guys and the guy handed the phone over the guy ran off the phone so you definitely don't want to be asking random people to take pictures for you in Paris so you just want to be careful um, my friend had her little fanny pack on her at all times but I didn't really think that was necessary for me I just had my backpack but I did have multiple pockets in my backpack so my ID and my wallet and things like that were like deep down in my backpack so um, even if you tried to steal from me I mean you would really have to try hard um, but yeah like I said if you're gonna have those messenger bags uh, with you, uh, just be careful, have carry in the front, and just kind of be careful when you bump into people or when you go to places that are really crowded. Just be careful at night. You know, like at night, there are a lot of people in the streets. I mean, there are a lot of tourists and people who drink and things like that. So just be careful. Don't travel alone if you're a female. And yeah, I think that's about it for this video. And yeah, if you have any questions about other travel tips and things like that for London or Paris, leave them in the comments box below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye!